I would describe my music as Christian Afrocentric leftist music. It's mostly hip hop if we're going by genre, but the themes and the topics are Christian Afrocentric and leftist. It's kind of redundant or kind of repetitive, you know, to say mm, Afrocentric and leftist or leftist and hip hop in my eyes, because to me, hip hop was supposed to be for the impoverished people, for the disenfranchised people underprivileged people, for the oppressed people, in short, you know. So, of course, it was always meant to include black people or people of African descent and people that are being exploited and used by the system. It's also uh, weird for me to overemphasize the point that it's leftist music and not uh, music for people that are centrist or people that are even right-wing because I don't want people to love Africa and be okay with how Africa has been treated, treated towards all these uh, centuries. And I don't want people to think it's okay to be Christian and make exceptions for when to uphold Christian values of, you know, laws and tolerance and compassion and altruism and when to be a ruthless capitalist that just makes money and millions and billions of extractions and exploitation and extraction of resources and butchering people and not caring about them because they are only African or because they had it coming or because they wouldn't know what to do with it, you know? All these type of discourses. And I'm not in favor of building the same capitalist structures, even if they are owned by African people and not just, you know, um, the neo-colonial playground to continue what has been done in colonial times. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying it is Christian, Afrocentric, leftist, hip-hop. Of course, I can also make R&B music. I can also write and sing ballads and other types of music. But that's the main point I'm trying to make. So I hope you have a blessed Sunday. I've just released an album that's called Outgrowing. And just like in the title track, Outgrowing, in the chorus, I sing what this whole album is practically about. It's about outgrowing my family, outgrowing society, and outgrowing habitual sin. Because I've been through some trauma and dysfunction in my life, especially in the last years. You know, this pandemic hit me hard on a personal level, financially, and, you know, on a social level, politically. A lot has happened. I really thought about Black Panthers and about... Black Lives Matter and it all rattled me up. It changed uh, the way I want to move forward. I mean, publicly. I've always been thinking about these things, but publicly, I'm really, you know, I was like, F this nation and F that nation and F that coalition publicly ever since uh, 2020. And I've been like that ever since in my music, in my poetry, in my poetry slams, in all the stuff I'm writing and talking about. So that's what changed starting with the pandemic. Also, my Christian faith has been a journey for me. I'm a son of a pastor, but I also had to have my own course with God. So it was a time where I strayed away from him. I was looking for different philosophies, even religions and way of life, you know, mysticism, Gnosticism, all the kind of stuff you can put your hands on. Mm, Dabbled in it. Theoretically, I haven't been a practitioner of anything else but i've always been a skeptic and looking for logical conclusions and what makes most sense but now i found that for me personally it's just a christian faith that gives me a grounding and that keeps me centered and it keeps me you know motivated energized and feeling that i can live with purpose and meaning here and and after this life and yeah, the leftist approach, like I said, is self-explanatory. I've been through a lot. I've seen the connections and I've made my own conclusions. Not as the first person, but I have made them for my life, saying that, okay, there are powers I play that don't want us to succeed, that don't want us to thrive and be happy and healthy and intelligent and united and connected, you know? So they're dividing our unions, our communities, and they're trying to isolate us and hurt us and make us feel as if we're lonely and we don't have no one. We have no God, no family, no friends, no people that are like us, that can relate to us. And that we have no force, neither as an individual nor as a collective. And these are all lies of Satan. The same Satan is inspiring them to act this way. That is um, the one that they choose to, to embody them and use them as vessels of evil works. And I oppose that on a religious level, on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on a political level. I just don't want no one to hold me down and my people down and people that look like me, not not just being male or being black, but people 
that are artists, that are thinkers, that are imaginative people, that are wanting the best for themselves and for others. Because I would never want to feel good and be great at the expense of others. That's not how I define greatness. That is not what I respect, what I consider noteworthy, remarkable and aspirational. So that's why I'm just at odds with the world and that's why I make this music this way. That's why I make it independent on purpose. That is why I don't want to sign with major labels that bob their heads when their satanic uh, songs play. I don't want none of that. You know, that, that is my ick. That is really, I don't want to do none of that. So I've grown my family. I've grown all the toxic stuff, all the dysfunction, all the extreme conflict or the avoidance of conflict, of healthy conflict that would lead to resolutions and to, to peace and clarity. I move beyond that because I want social harmony and peace. Secondly, outgrown society because society is weird, it's crazy, it is rotten, it is spoiled, it's not seeking to help one another, not seeking uh, for unity and peace and clarification and we are not rebuking people and then letting them back in or leaving it as part of of our circle. We are only casting out judgment and then we're vilifying them, demonizing them. We're trying to cancel them as soon as possible, you know. We talk about censorship, but we ourselves, the, the commoners, we're trying to hate people and banish them as, as soon as possible and take their spot. So we're all fighting for scraps. We're not understanding that we should work together and live together in peace and harmony. And secondly, and thirdly, <laughs> I'm not growing my habitual sense. The stuff I know I'm doing, the stuff I should be doing, but I can't stop doing. I can't help myself. I can't do it on my own. You know, all that stuff I'm, I'm growing because it's a mindset. Some part of me must be thinking that I need it in order to feel better, in order to relieve stress, in order to 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 gain validation, acceptance, the ego boost, whatever it is. So that's part of me that thinks that okay, I gotta continue doing this either constantly or every now and then as an emergency plan. I gotta go back to these people, to these habits, to these patterns of behavior, to these um, products and to these uh, content, to these materials. So that is what I'm breaking out of. It's called outgrowing and I said it in a present progressive form because it's the process. I'm not here claiming that I'm outgrowing all of this. Now I'm holier than the saints. Now I'm, you know, a monk. No, nothing he faces me at all, ever. But I'm not also not saying that I want a sinner, always a sinner, because that's also tr a, a false. What's true is to say that we are a saint because we have accepted Christ and the Holy Spirit is living in us and working through us. But we have to be pure and saint, just like our God is saint. And with Jesus Christ, we have the possibility to always be forgiven for our sins and to be sanctified and washed again through the blood of Jesus Christ. Meaning that we can always go back to him by admitting our mistakes and by admitting that we are wrong and not understanding and not doing what we know we should have done. And Because there are two types of sin. You can either do what is wrong or you can fail to do what is right. So either way, once we understand that, we go to Christ and say, and then we are sorry and we repent, you know, from the bottom of our hearts. And that's how things change for us in our personal life spiritually. So that is what I'm trying to do with this album. That's why some songs are super personal. I'm really talking about my personal life because I'm not here writing hits, not trying to make this super relatable song. Because I had a lot of stuff to go through, to work out. And every song I wrote, even the ones that ended up on my B-side compilation albums, I meant every word, I meant every line. I wrote them in an attempt to hear my inner child, to understand what was going on and to come to terms with it, to to really grasp what was happening and to not be affected by it because I was down. I I, I lost the drive, you know, to move forward and to, to look for a bright future. So that's why everything you hear is really my attempt of getting over all this and come to a place of forgiving others and forgiving myself and coming out strong of this, you know, resilient, developing anti-fragility and not be more fragile about all the bad stuff that's happening. So that's why I, I'm doing this. And I want, I have forgiven my family without them issuing apologies to me. 
I'm seeing beyond the ills of society, and I can uh, probably say I've grown closer to God. So praise God. I hope you listen to this album. It's out on YouTube and Spotify. I want to put it on Bandcamp too and on my personal website. Haven't set it up yet, but I will. So that's why I'm telling you I have these four places where I will upload it. So see you then. God bless you. Outgrowing.